This is the season of Charlton Athletics, season 97-98. A season never to be forgotten. A season which started in the sunshine of the Riverside Stadium against newly relegated Middlesbrough. Fabrizio Ravanelli, Emerson and all. And what a start to the season for Steve Jones. Partnering new signing Clive Mendonca, he stunned the home fans to give Charlton an unexpected lead. Charlton played admirably well on that opening day, but were undone late on, first by Italian Gianluca Festa, and then in the dying moments by Fabrizio Ravanelli. So Borough ran out 2-1 opening day winners. Four days later, it was the Coca-Cola Cup and a two-legged tie against Ipswich, something Charlton would experience much later in the season. The first leg at the Valley brought one of the most controversial goals of the season, Andy Pettersson a judge to have held on to the ball too long. Mark Venus scored for Ipswich. And Charlton couldn't avoid a second straight defeat or a first leg deficit despite Steve Jones' late header. In fact, it could have been worse than 1-0 for Charlton, but for a late interception by Stuart Barmer denying Ipswich a second goal. But an uphill battle for the second leg. Next up for Charlton were Oxford at the Valley and a first win of the season. Steve Jones scoring his second of the term. Charlton fans wanted some return from Clive Mendonca. They didn't have to wait too long for the record signing to notch his first for the club. Skills like this, seen here for the first time at the Valley, were to become a regular feature of the season. Not that this game was in the bag yet. Oxford's Darren Purse gave the visitors a chance. A crowd of just over 10,000 at the Valley were delighted to see substitute Kevin Lisby make it 3-1. The youngster scoring his second goal for the club. Even then though the points weren't quite safe. Andy Pettersson got on the wrong side of another referee. And Oxford's Nigel Jempson scored. But Charlton won 3-2, a first win and a weight off the shoulders. Important then to, to pick up that first win of the season and Clive's first goal, which was in, in the game against Oxford. Yeah, that's right. Obviously, Clive was going to be disappointed but he didn't get off to a start straight away. But he brings a lot more than just scoring goals to us and that's what he was doing before he scored the first one. And we knew once he scored his first one, then he would just go on, and that, that's, what's, that's, what the, that's what's happened. Um, he's just gone on from strength to strength. The win over Oxford was also significant for the first appearance of Paul Konczewski at 16, the youngest ever Charlton first-teamer. And he played at Berry too, who were unbeaten at this stage of the season and survived a battering of Charlton shots. Konczewski wearing three, almost set up what might have proved the winner for Charlton but John Robinson was denied again and so back to the Coca-Cola Cup and at Portman Road that 1-0 deficit against Ipswich but 1-0 on aggregate quickly became 2 thanks to Mark Steen and an uphill task was made virtually impossible as Steve Brown was unlucky to score an own goal Ipswich's third was headed home by James Scowcroft, the young England under-21 international striker. 3-0 on the night, 4-0 on aggregate. At least Charlton got one. Clive Mendonca for 3-1. And so to one of the most attractive home games of the season, the visit of Manchester City. But Gerard Vikins gave the visitors the lead. And City also scored the second goal in the game. But it was a sweet moment for Charlton fans. The former Millwall defender Jason Van Blurk 
scoring an own goal. And Charlton turned it around for three points. And an unlikely goal scorer in Keith Jones. Manchester City beaten. And so two weeks later from one early promotion favourite to another as Charlton visited Molyneux and Wolverhampton Wanderers. But were behind when Robbie Keane's cross was turned home by the old favourite Steve Bull. And when Steve Froggett thumped another left footer past Andy Patterson, Charlton were in trouble. And Wolves more or less settled the points with their third goal, again from Steve Bull. Not much Andy Pettersson could do to stop him from seven yards. Again, Charlton managed a consolation. Phil Chappell, the man who claimed their only goal of the game. The 3-1 defeat at Molyneux was Charlton's fourth reverse of the season and only two wins so far. But at last they found their touch at Norwich. A day to remember for Clive Mendonca. Lashing home Charlton's first with his left foot. Norwich was soon to be swept away by the man in the number 10 shirt. Mendonca's second, a tap-in after a silly defensive mix-up. Now Charlton fans were hoping for a hat-trick from the new boy. And they weren't to be disappointed. Again, the poacher's eye for goal after Steve Jones had done the hard work. And Mendonca's match ball. And Phil Chappell, who'd scored that consolation goal at Wolves, got on the act as well. 4-0. And a win to be remembered by Mendonca. Perhaps your best memory of the season so far would be the hat-trick at Norwich. Just talk us through the, the three goals, if you can, quickly, if you remember them. Uh, just trying to think. I think the, th the first one was off a corner. There was just a rebound, and I was just there to stick it in, really. Uh, the second one... I think Paul Mortimer had done a good cross and I just got in front of the defender and stuck it in. And the third, Steve Jones went through, had a shot, and I just followed up the rebound and luckily it felt it was and I just stuck it in. So, I mean, it was, they were all easy goals, really, like tap-ins. But, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, I got a hat-trick and I was really pleased. I'm really pleased with describe Clive Mendonca and Alan Kerbishley on a sunny Sunday in September when Bradford came to the Valley. Mendonca on the score sheet again to put Charlton 1-0 up. But the home fans were incensed soon after as Adinho appeared to punch a Peter Beagre cross into the back of the Charlton net. The referee said the goal would stand. The Bradford celebrations were short-lived though. Charlton were in the mood this afternoon. And look at this from Paul Mortimer. Surely one of Charlton's goals of the season Surely one of the best Mortimer scored in his career. Talk about great goals in a career. All the goals Steve Brown has scored could be counted on the finger of one hand. But look at that from 40 yards. A Steve Brown special and Charlton 3-1 up. Clive Mendonca, of course, wasn't to be outshone. He swept home number four. All set then for a comfortable victory over Stockport, surely. Well, it looked like it when Charlton took the lead. Paul Mortimer again, not quite matching his goal of the previous game, but it wasn't bad. Suddenly from nowhere, though, this game was to all go wrong for the Addicts. As Stockport pulled off a surprise away victory. Their equaliser scrambled in by Alan Armstrong. 
a young striker later to join Middlesbrough. Their second stuck home by Brett Angel. And Charlton contributed to their own downfall with Stockport's third. Own goal, Richard Rufus, 3-1 to Stockport. Well, what better way than to lift the spirits than to go across town and beat Queen's Park Rangers on their own patch. John Robinson gave Charlton the lead with a low right-footed grass cutter. This was probably one of the games of the season. Fluctuating this way and that, Mike Sharon making it one all. After eight games without a goal, Steve Jones was due some return. And John Robinson turned from goal scorer to goal provider as Jones found the vital touch. 2-1. Charlton extended that lead. Robinson again. But as he ran into a rich vein of goal scoring, so was Phil Chappell. His third goal of the season, 4-1 to Charlton. But even this derby wasn't quite won yet. Mike Sharon had another say. But it didn't stop the points travelling from west to east in the direction of the valley. QPR 2, Charlton 4. Just uh, talk us through your goals against Queen's Park Rangers, if you can, if you remember them. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think Sean Newton got the crossing for one of them, um, just on the edge, and I've just gambled. Um, we're through for Bre um, Brevet. Um, he's at a touch and he's just gone away and I've hit it uh, first time. Across the keeper, and I was obviously pleased because that was the first one of the season. Um, and then the second one was a bit similar as well. Um, it was on the edge of the area, and I probably mishit it a little bit in the second one um, but no I mean obviously that was, I was really pleased with them getting, going in and the game on the whole but the main thing is that from a personal point of view obviously that we we creating them and scoring them from different positions as well um, obviously I'd like to get 10 or 11 this year um, so three at the moment not, I'm quite happy with as long as as long as we win and we're creating them for the front men it's when we're not scoring and not creating them then you've got to start worrying about you've got to change something Charlton had scored 13 goals then in their last four games. Struggling Huddersfield proved no match for them at the McAlpine Stadium. Clyde Mendonca with another tidy finish for 1 0. Huddersfield had lost heavily to Nottingham Forest and West Ham in their previous two games and fell 2 0 behind thanks to a Steve Brown header. But remember that rich vein of scoring form from John Robinson? Well, he showed that deadly touch once again for the final goal of the night. 3-0 to Charlton. And the perfect way to warm up for the next game. Another one shown live on TV, back at the Valley, when the visitors were Stoke City. But this one didn't go quite according to plan. At this stage of the season, Stoke were in great form and showed it by taking the lead. Graham Kavanagh's cross picked out Ray Wallace, who picked out a cracking right foot finish. So the onus was on Charlton to come back, and come back they did. Mark Kinsella hadn't scored all season. but waited for something a little special to earn a point. But still one all against Stoke, a bit of a disappointment. Next to visit the Valley were Birmingham City, one of Alan Kerbisley's old clubs, so a special game for him and an important goal for Clive Mendonca. Birmingham were always likely to be one of the promotion rivals and were starting a run of five consecutive draws. 
uh, equaliser here scored by Paul Devlin. Charlton 1, Birmingham 1. And not much time to recover before the away game at Tranmere. And again, Charlton fell behind. Graham Branch from close range beating Andy Pettersson. At Prenton Park, a draw is always a good result. And Mark Kinsella's free kick was probably one of the best goals seen there all season. Something like 25 yards out and perfectly placed under the crossbar. Several times already this season, Charlton had shown the ability to come from behind and they showed it again here. John Robinson turning provider once more and Carl Lieburn picked up his first goal of the season. Charlton 2-1 up. But still the scoring wasn't finished and the former Liverpool striker Lee Jones earned the home side a point. Three consecutive draws then, Mark Kinsella scored in two of them. Stoker didn't quite go so well but you got off the mark. Yes, yeah, so, I mean they came to do a job and uh, because of the goals we've been scoring before then they you know, sat off us and let us try and break them down. Um, and I thought you know, the goal they got probably went against maybe the run of play but I mean it was, it was a goal that deserved to go 1-0 up. But we battled on and uh, I got my first goal, which was a deflection, but I mean, they all count and it, it's got me off the mark, really. And you might well have gone on to win that game. Yeah, we could have done. We, we passed about the last 15 minutes. We kept passing and we didn't you know, push it forward or, or panic under the situation that we were in. And uh, we come away with a point and uh, you know, just kept the run going. Just tell us about your second goal. It was up at uh, Tramier over as a two-all draw. Yeah, we, uh, we had a free kick and uh, I thought we, you know, we were 1-0 down again, but we should have been... You know, we had a couple of chances before half time. We went in at half time. We thought, you know, we could still win this game. Uh, we came out of the second half, started pushing forward, and we got a free kick in the edge of the box um, and just you know, had a little smack in there. It sort of surprised myself that I went in. But uh, three minutes, four minutes later, we went on and got, got another one. Uh, two one up. And, you know, we didn't look like, you know, losing it. it was, we don't, you know, we make our own mistakes and uh, we give away their own, our own points. And uh, they, they equalised and we come away with a point, which should have been, you know, two lost again. Now remember that Coca-Cola Cup defeat against Ipswich. Well, the Suffolk side had gone on to knock Manchester United out of the competition and Charlton felt they owed them some revenge. And they got it. Clive Mendonca with the first goal of the game at the Valley. Phil Chappell's scoring run continued too. And this time, Ipswich were never in the encounter. Having got off the mark at Tranmere, Carl Lieburn did it again against Ipswich, and a very satisfying win. Lieburn, at this stage, on a week-to-week -week contract and beginning to attract the eyes of Wimbledon. You uh, look back at, at some of your goals this season, the first one this this term came up in the draw at, uh, at Tramia Rovers, which is a difficult place to go and get a point. That's another good away performance from Charlton this season. Yeah, they're a good footballing side. Um, it, as I like them, a nice little tap in, you know, my, from my first game for the season there. Um, so I was uh, well happy. And then you followed it up immediately. In the next game, you, you scored again, which is uh, the game against Ipswich at the Valley. Yeah, home game, you know, uh, in training, we've been working on a lot of, uh, of our crossing, um, quality crossing. Uh, and I was able to get ahead of there, so um, I just got to keep that going, really, to stay in the team. Because as I say, you know, you come off the pace, you, you know, you could be on the sidelines or resting, whatever. Sunderland's fantastic new stadium of light was the talk of the first division. The Premiership ground, but could Sunderland find a Premiership team? Against Charlton, they almost lost when a Sunderland supporter, Clive Mendonca, nearly won it for the visitors. And how far do you think that you can go with, with this group of players? Obviously, the aim is to get into the Premier League, and people will no doubt worry when they see Barnsley struggling so badly in, in, in the Premier League as they are this season, and think, well, how would we fare? I think it's uh, fair to say there's a big gap. I think the only reason there is a big gap between 
the Premiership and the next one is the money, and you can't mistake that. But I also do feel that for all the Barnsleys, you've got the Derbys and the Leicesters who have done well. So I'd like to think that we may perhaps be a Derby and a Leicester. A third of the way through the season, and so far so good. But West Bromwich Albion were also up and pushing for promotion. So an important game at the Hawthorns. Unfortunately, one which Charlton lost. Andy Hunt given an empty net to roll the ball into. It was Charlton's first defeat in six weeks. Five men Donka missed that game and the next one back at the Valley against Crew Alexandra. So who would take on the scoring responsibility? Well, first, Keith Jones. His second goal of the season. And the first of five in another exciting match. Jason Kearton in the crew goal was left exposed by his defence and Bradley Allen, replacing Mendonca, scored an easy second. But Struggler's crew had just ended a run of four straight defeats by beating Oxford at Gresty Road. And they had some confidence restored here as Kevin Street made it 2-1, catching Andy Pedersen off his line. Something of a shock for the home fans and worse was to come. Sean Smith claiming a bizarre goal and the two-goal lead had disappeared. Charlton showed their resilience though to run out winners in the end. Steve Brown's cross caused mayhem and Matty Holmes scored his first goal for Charlton. A rare high moment for him after injury had all but spoilt his early career at the club. So the 3-2 win put Charlton right back in the frame at the right end of the first division. But the club everyone was chasing was Nottingham Forest. And at the city ground, they showed why. Pierre van Hooydonk, one of the stars of the first division, putting the home side in front. And what about that from the Dutchman to make it 2-0? And when Van Hooydonk's in the mood, there's few defences that could keep him out. Two nil became three nil and inevitably it was Van Hooydonk who scored again. Kevin Campbell's header saved by Pettersson, but the former Celtic striker on hand to put the game beyond Charlton. Not that there wasn't a comeback of sorts. Bradley Allen sneaking behind the Forest defence to make it 3-1 and give those travelling supporters something to cheer about. But Ian Wones' left boot soon restored Forrest's three-goal advantage. Before the former Crystal Palace man, Jeff Thomas, scored an own goal right in front of the Charlton fans to make the journey worthwhile. Though Forrest took all the points, of course, Kevin Campbell's header made it 5-2. Though Charlton would have their revenge in Cup and League back at the Valley later. And back at the Valley, Steve McMahon Swindon was swept aside. Keith Jones finding his range from long distance again. And Clyde Mendonca, back in the team, was back on the score sheet too. Firstly from a disputed penalty. And Mendonca's second and Charlton's third. A sweet move that left Swindon with no answers.
3-0 to Charlton. But again, home victory was followed by away defeat. This time at Elm Park against Reading. Lee Hodges bouncing left footer, giving Mike Salmon little chance on his first game back in the Charlton goal. And when Richard Rufus felt he had to give away a penalty, Salmon faced Trevor Morley from 12 yards and Reading had won the game. Sheffield United were another side to be contended with at the top of the table, so it was an important game at the Valley in early December that saw Clive Mendonca score yet another goal. This time the penalty went Charlton's way, again given for handball, and Donker made no mistake. And Donker's second more or less sealed it. Mark Bowen brought back from Japanese football. And Clive Mendonka ghosting in at the near post tucked home his shot. Christmas can make or break a season. It was important Charlton had a good one. So there were a few nerves around when Nicky Marker managed to make it 2-1. Mike Salmon unsighted by a late deflection. But Charlton held out, and the next home match against Port Vale brought them an equally narrow victory. Clive Mendonca had been scoring from that range all season, but not on this occasion. The visitors proved hard to break down, but the winning goal finally came, and in style, from Sean Newton. Charlton won Port Vale nil. And this winning sequence continued at Portsmouth. John Robinson with the touch, Can you hear the Pompey sing? Charlton second, and the winning goal was provided by Robinson and scored by Carl Lieburn in front of the visiting Addicts fans. After Christmas, Charlton came back in good mood for the visit of Norwich, swept aside back at Carrow Road in early season, and Charlton won this one too though with a little more difficulty. But what a strike by Mark Kinsella. A Christmas present of his own to the Valley supporters. After that candidate for goal of the season, Charlton went 2-0 up. Again, John Robinson involved, as so often through the course of the year. And Robinson put the game beyond Norwich. Though the Canaries did at least give themselves something to sing about. A penalty awarded in the second half. Highly rated youngster Craig Bellamy scored from the spot. Charlton 2, Norwich 1. The final game of 1997 came at Bramall Lane. A quick chance for revenge for Sheffield United for their defeat at the Valley. And Gareth Taylor put them in front. Charlton really never got going here, and Dean Saunders made it 2-0. In the second half, it was three. Brian Dean following up. He was on his way to Benfica. The points were staying where they were, though. Nicky Marker, who'd scored at the Valley, made it four.
at least Mark Bright got one back, his first goal of the campaign. Sheffield United four, Charlton one. And so to the FA Cup third round and the visit of Nottingham Forest. A long-awaited game and one that'll live long in the memory. John Robinson got the ball rolling. Forrest, one of the shining lights of the first division, simply couldn't live with Charlton on the day. And the home side breezed through to round four. Steve Brown lashing home the second. Some revenge for the league defeat at the city ground a little over a month ago. Forrest made a game of it though. Pierre van Hooydonk inevitably with the header. But Charlton were only shaken out of their stride for a moment or two. And coming up, Carl Lieburn's last ever goal for the club. 3-1 to Charlton. Lieburn soon heading for Wimbledon. If the old favourite was leaving, the new king was in sparkling form and Clive Mendonca made it four. A great cup victory. And a great way to prepare for the next league game. The visit of Middlesbrough. And memories of that narrow opening day defeat at the Riverside Stadium. Sean Newton remembered that and he made Borough pay. Newton showing just why he's become an England under-21 international. Poise, balance and a great left-footed shot. Soon he was at it again, providing the cross this time that was headed home by Mark Bright. Tunnel up against Middlesbrough and self-belief was surging through the Charlton veins. Kinsella's corner not cleared, Newton again, another special finish and Middlesbrough beaten out of sight. Fifteen or twenty players in the penalty area and Newton the coolest of the lot. With victories like this, Charlton began to be taken seriously as promotion contenders. But sweeping aside the likes of Middlesbrough is important in a promotion campaign. So is coming from behind against the likes of Oxford. Nigel Jempson gave them the lead at the Manor Ground. But again, Charlton showed that they have the required resilience to come from behind. Tremendous volley from Clive Mendonca made it 1-1. And Charlton snatched the victory with yet another vital goal from John Robinson. Now Charlton were attacking success on two fronts, the First Division and the FA Cup. The fourth round and Wolves at the Valley. But Dean Richards header wasn't in Alan Kirbishley's script. Charlton managed to force a replay though. Keith Jones with another typical shot from the edge of the penalty area. But a return to Molyneux for a replay was not what Charlton wanted. Charlton have never had much luck at Main Road in recent years. When Mike Salmon was injured, there was no substitute goalkeeper. So Steve Brown faced Paul Dickhoff's penalty with predictable results. Steve Jones had just returned from a successful loan spell with Bournemouth. He'd come on when Salmon was injured and shown the kind of form that had got the Bournemouth fans excited. Jones always a reliable substitute up front. 
chipping in with another important goal. Manchester City were in desperate need of points and thought they had all three when Kit Simons nodded beyond Brown. But for once, Charlton got a late break in Manchester with Steve Jones again. Frank Clark wouldn't survive much longer. After 14 games without a victory, many expected Berry to be swept aside at the Valley, but again they proved difficult to break down. It had been nil-nil at Gig Lane in August. It was nil-nil again in January. Mark Kinsella the first to come close. And in a game Charlton dominated, he again tested the visiting goalkeeper. Back to the Cup, back to Molyneux. Wolves and Charlton bidding for the right to visit Wimbledon in round five. But this wasn't to be Charlton's day. It certainly wasn't to be Matty Holmes' day. Yet another dreadful injury. Yet another blow to his Charlton career. Charlton seemed unsettled by that and Wolves ran out comfortable winners in the end. Mark Kinsella got in a tangle. Andy Pettersson brought down Dougie Friedman. The referee pointed to the spot and Keith Curl score. Wolves' second goal was a first in his career for young Lee Naylor. Heading beyond Pettersson and effectively heading Charlton out of the cup, though insult was added to injury by Mixu Patalainen. Wolves 3, Charlton 0. Time to concentrate on the league. And time to take a break for Mark Bright after this challenge on the Wolves goalkeeper incensed the home players and supporters. It was a challenge for which Mark Bright got his marching orders. Charlton suddenly in a difficult spell. One defeat and three draws from their last four games became two defeats and three draws from five. Robbie Blake with the winning goal for Bradford. And so to the return game against Queen's Park Rangers. And another bad start for Charlton. A penalty to the visitors. Dad Keith didn't know whether to laugh or cry. A son Gavin put the visitors 1-0 up. But how many times has John Robinson found a goal just when it mattered over the course of the season? And he came up trumps again. One apiece. But Charlton's season beginning to stutter. And next the long and difficult trip to Edgeley Park to take on Stockport. Who'd won at the Valley and won again. Kevin Cooper with the first goal. And the second. And on a day when Charlton really weren't at the races, Andy Much got the third. Much, too much for Alan Kerbishley. More than a month without a win now, Charlton needed a change of fortunes. And they had a change of goalkeeper. Enter one Sasha Illich. Entering into the back of the net. A Charlton goal skewed in by John Robinson. Stoke in real relegation trouble. Did manage to level it up. The first time Illich had been beaten in the Charlton first team. Wasn't to happen too many times more. Graham Kavanagh enjoyed his moment. Charlton enjoyed the night more though. Anthony Barnes scoring his first goal of the season to win the game. And what an important time to return to winning ways. 
Huddersfield were the next visitors to the Valley. And they were beaten too, albeit narrowly. Mark Bright's header did the trick. And Bright was about to run into a vein of form. West Bromwich Albion were next up and the confidence was surging again. Sean Newton teasing the Midlanders defence and Mark Bright was in the right place once more. The goal feast had begun, Newton himself got the second. West Bromwich Albion had been early league leaders but they were to be on the end of a pasting this night as Sean Newton showed off some of his rich promise. Clive Mendonca hadn't scored since January, but he was soon to put that right. In behind the defence, brought down by the goalkeeper, only one option for the referee. Only one man to take the penalty, 3-0. And what about this free kick? Fooled West Brom, Mark Kinsella, and that's four. West Brom couldn't stand the rain or the pace. Clive Mendonca couldn't miss. 5-0 to Charlton. All this time, Ipswich had been climbing the table to be genuine promotion candidates. But having found his scoring touch again, Mendonca showed it off once more. But George Burley's Ipswich hadn't lost a league match for four months and they showed Charlton why in the second half. Mick Stockwell scooped home the equaliser. And once they'd got their game up and running, Ipswich really turned it on. Jason Cundy headed home their second. Ipswich's signing of the season, David Johnson, bought from Berry, settled the matter with a third. It was an important month coming up with Sunderland, the visitors to the Valley. Kevin Phillips gave them the lead. But the two promotion rivals couldn't be separated and Charlton deserved their draw. Mark Bright on target again. Then to Gresty Road, crew and a comfortable Charlton win. And a record for Danny Mills, new signing from Norwich. Scoring within minutes of his debut. What a way to start your career. Crew had lost 3-2 at the Valley earlier in the season. At Gresty Road, it was to be a more comfortable Charlton victory. Once ahead, they never looked in real trouble. And Sean Newton made it two with a typically confident finish. Outstripping the crew defence and beating Jason Keaton easily. All the goals from defence or midfield this time. Paul Mortimer found Mark Kinsella and he found the corner. Through nil, Charlton three. And so to the crunch promotion clash with Nottingham Forest at the Valley. 
And what about the impact of Eddie Yowds on his first Charlton appearance, heading back across the Forest goal for Mark Bright to put Charlton in front. That lead wasn't to last for too long though. Kevin Campbell, former Arsenal striker back in London, levelling it at one all. Now when Paul Mortimer scores, it always tends to be a special occasion and a special goal. This was no exception, that's 2-1 to Charlton. Nearly 16,000 at the Valley for one of the games of the season. It could make or break Charlton's promotion campaign. And Mortimer showed just the kind of coolness they needed under pressure. And Charlton earned themselves some breathing space when Clive Mendonca was hauled over inside the penalty area. Colin Cooper, the offender. And Mendonca made no mistake again. And the game all but over now, as Mark Kinsella sidesteps Dave Besson. And for the second time in the season, Forrest have been well beaten at the Valley. So they did have the final say with Kevin Campbell's second goal of the game. But Charlton's promotion campaign very much on and given new impetus by two new signings. 4-2, a bit of a flattery, or do you think that was well worth it? Um, I, don't, I think maybe 3-1, maybe 3-1, three, 2-1. One. Um, three, one, one. Uh, but once we got the third goal, that was it. You know, we held out, we had a bit of pressure. Um, they're very strong on set pieces, big team. Um, but we were really pleased to, you know, to get a win but disappointing to let a, you know let a goal in the last couple of minutes was a bit disappointing all seemed to come when you rode your luck a little bit with a free kick off the corner of the post and then after that it was just all opened up yeah i think um you know that happens so often in football um, a team gets a chance at one end and it doesn't happen and then a couple of minutes later um the opposition go up and score at the other end um yeah we did it yeah you could say that changed the game Seven games to go and four clubs chasing only two automatic promotion places. Every game is vital and Swindon must be beaten at the county ground. And Steve Jones ensures that they are. Charlton's defence is turning into one of the tightest in the league. A single goal at the other end will often win a game as it proved here at the county ground. A 1-0 win for Charlton. And Wolves again at the Valley, this time in the league. Another 1-0 win. Clive Mendonca's header. Three precious points. Five games to go. Could Charlton squeeze into the top three? Reading next at the Valley. Illich's massive clearance. Mendonca again in the right place at the right time. And Reading, who had beaten Charlton at Elm Park, are behind. Paul Mortimer's free kick made it two. Told you every Mortimer goal is a special occasion. and Reading in the relegation mire were hit for a third by Mark Bright. Six wins on the run and only two goals conceded. Next to Port Vale and win number seven, the fans travelled free courtesy of the club. The three points were hard earned though Danny Mills brought down in the penalty area. 
penalty to Charlton. Another test for Clive Mendonca. Another A grade for him and Alan Kerbishley. Back to the Valley and it's Portsmouth, the side who provided the first ever opposition in Charlton's second spell at the ground and just about survived there. But Steve Jones' power in the air was eventually too much for them and again Charlton had won a game by a single goal. Two games to go, wins over Tranmere and Birmingham might be enough for automatic promotion. First, Tranmere. Was that a penalty? The referee thought it was. Richard Roof has tumbled over. You can rely on Mendonca. 1-0. The men from Merseyside had no answers. And Charlton had two penalties. Same taker, same result. One game to go, Birmingham away, and Charlton can still go up automatically. Third full house on the trot as well. The atmosphere here was tremendous today. Yeah, as I said afterwards on the pitch, that uh, obviously the pleasing thing is the way we've played this year, but, but I don't think I've ever heard uh, a noise like it at the Valley. And, uh, you know, I've been here 11 years now, and, and certainly the atmosphere has never been like this before. Obviously, it's a lot to do with the way we've been playing and winning, but, but certainly the fans have took it on board and I think they are giving it their best shot as well. And, you know, I hope we can take as many as we can up to Birmingham and uh, give as good as we get there because certainly that will be some sort of atmosphere up there. In the end, a nil-nil draw wasn't quite enough. It's the playoffs for Charlton and Ipswich in the playoff semi-final, although Steve Jones thought he might have done enough to win the game at Birmingham but plenty to look back on with pleasure, plenty to look forward to in the playoffs. Memories are made of this, memories are made of Mendonca. And so to the playoff semi-final first leg in Portman Road, a ground on which Charlton had twice lost during the course of the season, but a different story this time. When Keith Jones broke free on the left and looked for Mark Bright, Jamie Clapham turned the ball past his own goalkeeper. A moment of horror for him, a moment of sheer joy for Charlton. 1-0 up, they defended manfully with 10 men after Danny Mills was sent off. Sasha Illich magnificent as Clapham tried to make amends. And so with a 1-0 lead, back to the Valley for the second leg and 90 minutes away from Wembley. The biggest day at the Valley since the club returned. 15,585 inside to watch Sean Newton clinch the playoff semis with another stunning strike. Bedlam at the Valley, 1-0 on the night, 2-0 on aggregate. Charlton can book their ticket for the Twin Towers. More than 13 and a half hours without conceding a goal. They've been flying in like that at the other end. And Charlton are going to Wembley.
it might have been even more convincing. The playoffs were just two games too many for Ipswich, who were well beaten in the end. Steve Jones might have made it even more comprehensive. But 1-0 was enough. Meanwhile, Sunderland were beating Sheffield United to overcome their playoff first leg deficit and set up a battle royal in the final. The prize for Charlton and Sunderland, a place in the Premier League. I'll talk about the first game, but even here we can go to Portman and I'll get a decent result so to bring them back here in front of our own we haven't, we haven't lost here in 12 games and look at them once all season and they were, with the crowd behind us were phenomenal, it's good, brilliant support tonight. Over the two games you were very solid, the whole team, it wasn't really a lot of pressure in the sense of what we were going to lose, it was just a great performance both rounds wasn't it? Yeah it's just a professional performance, I mean we played better football this season but well, the back four don't look like they're going to concede a goal to the end of like another game and if we keep playing the way we are we'll get chances and they'll stuck in the way so Today. Sunderland at Wembley going to be another tough one. Yeah, they are, sir. We, we've driven them twice this season. Both good games, good football again. Wembley's a great pitch, so we hope we can put a good performance on again for the crowd. That's great, Mark. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you very much. You. We seem to handle Ipswich a lot better. I know we were at home tonight, but we were looking for the pressure. But we seem to control them very early on and for the whole game. It's 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 all pure determina determination and and you know really gets to work. I mean, all the lads walked into this game, even though we were 1-0 we were up, we walked into this game thinking it's only 1-0, anything can happen, it's 90 minutes to go, let's just concentrate, let's get down and work really hard. And um, the end result, we got 1-0 up and I'm really pleased with that. Sash, congratulations Thank and my best so wishes for you at Thank Wembley you. in a couple of weeks' time. All our dreams the last five years, absolutely fantastic. There's never been a night like this. And another clean sheet. Another clean sheet. One more clean sheet and we've got a good chance at Wembley. Yeah, it's going to be a tough game at Sunderland, isn't it? Sunderland at Wembley. Yeah, but to see 30,000 Charlton supporters will be absolutely fabulous. And what's quite interesting, it's all taken shape. The roof's gone and you even just cre screamed the roof down tonight. That's it. It's our fresco tonight. You know, it's beautiful. Thanks, everybody involved. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. They're two similar games, both over 90 minutes, and the side just stood their ground, didn't they? You know, and hung on. And again, nine clean sheets. Yeah, uh, we've got to do it again, you know, at Wembley. And uh, it's a great day out for the club. I've been saying all along, you know, when we didn't go straight up, perhaps the club deserves a day at Wembley. The last time we went there, I think we was at Sellers Park, we was in disarray. I don't think we could even sell our ticket allocation. Certainly can this time. You said to me a few weeks ago we were talking about the playoffs that you think you're so far better prepared this time round than we were a few years ago against Crystal Palace. Certainly are. And, uh, you know, perhaps, perhaps justice has been done. You know, the team will come third and fourth and got there. And uh, that's not happened for some time. And it's all on the day now. You say it's going to be a tough one at Wembley, it will be. Two good draws against Sunderland. And Mr Reid is quoted as saying one of the best sides he's played in Division 1 this year was Charlton. Oh, yeah. And he's quite right. So, uh, you know, we, we go there and uh, we've got nothing to fear. And we're looking forward to it. That's great. Alan, thanks very much. Go and see the team yeah. and we'll see you at Wembley. Thank you. This one, you do get a difference in the lighting anyway. But they are all the same shape. 11 days to build up for the biggest game in the club's history. A cup final in every sense, even down to the new Wembley suits. Suited and booted for the Twin Towers, the fans were just desperate to get their hands on a ticket rather than a tie. Charlton against Sunderland, the right teams had reached the playoff final. The best team on the day would reach the Premiership, not the only prize up for grabs. Manager of the year is Alan from Charlton. A great accolade, certainly, but at this stage, it's only winning at Wembley that matters to Charlton. It's going to Wembley as a manager to highlight my career. There's no two ways about that. What a day! It started out for Charlton more than nine months ago, 53 games ago, and now for Charlton and Sunderland, it's down to 90 minutes to join Nottingham Forest and Middlesbrough in the big league, in the Premier League. Tzilic hasn't conceded a goal for more than 13 hours now, almost conceded one then. Richard Rufus almost got in his goalkeeper's way. Mills clears it away for Charlton. 
he just couldn't make it on his left and Kevin Phillips very nearly sneaked in and took it away from the Charlton keeper it's a Charlton throw on this near side came off Johnston Sunderland with some defending to do now this is Mendonca, Mendonca great turn and scores Clive Mendonca and Charlton lead 24 minutes played and Clive Mendonca Sunderland fan Sunderland schoolboy scores against Sunderland in the playoff final Charlton won Sunderland nil and Clive Mendonca has come back to haunt the team of his youth magnificent turn and a brilliant finish by Mendonca. Mills with the long throw. The little flick on from Mark Brighton. Mendonca lost his marker, lost two of them, in fact. And finished brilliantly past Perez. Look at that turn. 1 0. The deadlock is broken. And our Charlton heading for the Premier League. And look at the reaction from Alan Kirbishley and the Charlton bench. That's the man that's broken the deadlock. And those are the fans that believe at the moment they're going up. Mendonca beautifully done. Sunderland have a problem again. That's Bright. Well defended actually by Gray. Half time in the playoff final and Clive Mendonca's goal means Charlton going one up and 45 minutes away from the Premier League. Some work to do for Peter Reid. Nearly 80,000 under the Twin Towers this afternoon. Roughly split half and half. Something like 35,000 fans from each side. 1-0 Charlton Lee. Danger for Charlton then, Summerby. Oh, it's in, Quinn at the near post. No one picked up Niall Quinn. Summerby's corner didn't look that good actually, but Quinn dived in and he beat Illich at the near post and it's 1-1. And look at the delight on those faces. Quinn's run to the near post. Eddie Yowds, I think, didn't stick with him. There was a man on the near post as well. It was Kinsella on the post, but he couldn't get a touch. 1-1 at Wembley. Training ground routine, I think. Some of his corner looked a bit flat to start with, but I think Quinn was expecting it. The game has certainly changed since that Sunderland goal. And here they have a chance with Phillips. Phillips, it's gone in. And the game has completely changed around. Kevin Phillips has scored for Sunderland. And not only has he put them 2-1 up, he's broken Brian Clough's goal-scoring record for the club. It's Kevin Phillips' 35th goal of the season. Sunderland are 2-1 up, two in eight minutes. And Charlton have it all to do again. And what a signing Kevin Phillips has been for Sunderland. Time ticking on on Charlton. Bowen with the throw. Jones with the turn. This is Mendonca. He's got goal side. Mendonca in the area. Mendonca 2-2. Clive Mendonca again and in behind the sleeping Sunderland defence it's 2-2 well those Charlton fans must have thought it was slipping away from them the dream is alive again 
Mendonca's pace over the first five to ten yards completely left the Sunderland defence in his wake. And Keith Jones can feel proud of his ball forward too. But what a cool finish. Perez had no chance at all. And what a day of mixed emotions this is turning out to be. This is Lee Clark with the cross. That's Quinn on his chest. Quinn! 3 2 to Sunderland. Niall Quinn has scored again. His second of the game. And Charlton were only level for two minutes. And Sunderland now are 16 minutes away from the Premier League. Great goal by Quinn. Twice now he's beaten Illich at the near post in this game. It just dropped over Danny Mills to Quinn. And he lashed it home perfectly. 3-2 to Sunderland. Mendonca has two. And Quinn has two. Getting towards the last throw of the dice now for Charlton. Is that a free kick for Clive Mendonca? Referee thinks it is. Mr. Wollstone home. Williams, I think, was the offender now. 3 2 Sunderland lead. Charlton have the free kick. Bowen right footed into the wall. What a save! by Perez, oh what a save by Lionel Perez in the Sunderland goal and Mark Bright must have thought he'd levelled it up reaction stopped by the goalkeeper and Bright can't believe it four minutes to go it's Rufus, it's in 3-3 Richard Rufus, it's his first ever goal for Charlton and he's kept them alive in the playoff final, would you believe it only seconds after Perez's save seemed to be taking Sunderland into the Premier League. He came for that corner and he wasn't within a country mile of that. And Rufus Klein, a good foot higher than anyone else. And in the end it was almost an open goal for him because the keeper had come so far. 3-3. Three, three. What a fantastic playoff final this is. What a place to score your first ever goal. Well, Illich has let in three in 90 minutes. He hadn't let in any in 13 hours. And we're heading, I think, for extra time. Almost too much to bear. Well, what do you do? Who'd be a manager? One last throw of the dice to win it, maybe. Three all, Bowen. Long and high, Perez comes again. He got there this time. And that's it. It's extra time. And Perez will wish he'd been that commanding around about four minutes ago. Nine months ago now, these two started the season, hoping that they would be in the shake-up for the Premier League. Now it's all down to this half hour. Sunderland just looking for a way through the Charlton defence. Very organised there. This is Summerby. Oh, Summerby! Magnificent goal! Nicky Summerby has scored, it's 4-3 to Sunderland. Nine minutes into extra time. Michael Gray set it up. And Summerby has beaten Illich. And this remarkable game has taken another twist. And for the third time now, Sunderland are in front. 
seven goals in the game. Nicky Summerbys could prove decisive. Sunderland scrap it away. Great challenge with Steve Brown with the challenge. This is Steve Jones. This is Mendonca. Hat trick. 4 4. And Charlton are still in with a shout. And Clive Mendonca has scored three. Absolutely unbelievable. Almost too much to take for the fans of both sides. It's 4 all. What a goal for a hat trick by Clive Mendonca. What control. Steve Brown won the ball, and without his contribution, the goal wouldn't have happened. Steve Jones with the cross, and Clive Mendonca has just been unstoppable this afternoon. 4 4. Look at that. That's what it means to be in with a shout, still a promotion. Like Russian roulette now. One mistake and you're out of it. It's Sean Newton on the edge of the area. Newton could win it and he hits a side netting. Hearts in mouths time for Sunderland fans and Charlton fans, I should think. Bowen forward. Charlton look the stronger, but time is ticking out now. And it looks like penalties, in fact it is. The referee's blown up, and it's down to spot kicks now. An extraordinary game of football. Three goals for him, two for Niall Quinn. Charlton four, Sunderland four. It's been a long, long time since the Twin Towers saw a game like this. It's going to be one of the tensest shootouts that the old stadium has ever seen as well. The prize is beyond riches, really, the Premier League. One of these two will get there, one of them won't. Someone will be a hero, someone is going to be the villain. Clive Mendonca with the first penalty. Up he comes, right footed, well, wouldn't you know it? He scored a hat trick. He's hardly going to miss now. 1 0. Good penalty. Mendonca scores. Now, Illich to face Nicky Summerby. Summerby, oh, great penalty, 1-1. One, one. Steve Brown, yes. Sigh of relief from Steve Brown, 2-1. And the goalkeeper hasn't got near one yet. Alan Johnston to level it up. A picture of concentration. Johnston. Oh. Well, he fooled Illish. Keith Jones, yes. Didn't look too confident. 3 2 to Charlton. It's a nice height for the keeper. But just made the corner. Kevin Ball, Sunderland's captain, head down. Beats Illich, though he went the right way. 3-3. From one captain to the other, Kinsella. Foolishly like, look at the relief, 4-3. And no one's missed one yet. What a weight off your shoulders when it hits the back of the net. Looks like he's enjoying it, Peter Reid. He doesn't. Chris Makin. The Sunderland 4 3 down on spot kicks. Oh, just gets it in. Illich almost tipped it round. It's 4 4. And he knows how close he was, Sasha Illich. Look at this. 
Chris Makin really didn't fancy this, I don't think. It wasn't a good penalty at all. And Illich is unlucky. Four four. Bowen for Charlton, yes. And now the pressure is really on because it's five four. No one's missed. And Alex Ray wants of Millwall has to score, does score. Five all. Sudden death penalties now. Can you believe it? Sudden death penalties to go up. And now we're down to the people who didn't volunteer. Five all. Sudden death. John Robinson. Six five to Charlton. Perez the wrong way. How long can this go on? Good penalty by Robinson. And now Niall Quinn has to score for Sunderland, and he does. Sends Illich the wrong way. And it's six all. Sean Newton for Charlton. Oh, cool. Seven six. Still nobody's missed. Sean Newton. Never looked like missing. Oh, he can't watch Alan Kirby. Cannot look. It's going to be Michael Gray for Sunderland. Runs back, wants to get it over with Michael Gray. Has to score, doesn't score, and Charlton are promoted. Sasha Illich has saved it. Michael Gray has missed it, and Charlton are up. 7 6 in the shootout. Michael Gray. We'll remember that for a very, very, very long time. Charlton will remember this day, this season, for their whole lives. They're back in the Premier League in the most dramatic circumstances imaginable. What a day for Alan Kerbishley. What a day for Charlton. It's not really a day for losers, but that's what Peter Reid and Sunderland are today. They don't deserve really to be in the first division next season, neither do Charlton. But only three can go up. Charlton joined Middlesbrough and Forest. Sunderland stay down. Clive Mendonca, a hat trick against his former club, a hero. Sasha Illich, the penalty save, a hero. And Alan Kerbishley couldn't look, didn't have to look. The cheer said it all. And Mark Kinsella comes forward to pick up the trophy. That means Charlton are going up. What a moment for these players. It's Mark Bright, Sean Newton passes it to Mark Bright, kisses it and lifts it. And Steve Brown and John Robinson, who's had a marvellous season. And there's Illich, folk hero. And Clive Mendonca, who deserves it more than anyone. And Alan Kerbishley, the manager of the year. Try and get that trophy off him. Richard Murray congratulates him. Chartner up. And the next day greeted by Charlton fans out on the streets of South East London as heroes. Charlton Athletic back at the Valley and back in the Premier League. Fantastic response from the people who supported the club through thick and thin and who can now look forward to top flight football again. And a great day for the players who made it happen. I don't think it's really going to hit anybody, they were saying, now until the actual fixture lists come out and people actually know who they're playing next yeah, season. I mean, it's going to be a nice summer, isn't it? Everybody's going to be sort of the anticipation, you know, when they come out and see who we've got and... Uh, and basically, usually comes this st stage of the season, everybody's looking forward to the break, but I think the lads wouldn't mind carrying on straight into next season now.
And talking about breaks yourself, you've been picked for the World Squad, which is great. Yeah, I've been picked for the World Squad. We've got a game against Malta and against Tunisia, both of them away, so that's a great bonus for you know end of a good season. And now a nice tour, all the way down for the uh, Freedom down yes, there at Woolwich yeah, Channel. Yeah, that. I mean, it's not just for the lads, for the fans as well. Like, you know what I mean? We're all in it together, so it's... Oh, it's a great, great end of season, isn't it? That's great. Well, congratulations on yesterday, Mark. Cheers. And uh, hope all goes well with the internationals. Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. It was strange, though, wasn't it? With two sides of a great defensive record, and suddenly, after 90 minutes, it's 3 all. Well, yeah, it was amazing, yeah. I mean, uh, Sasha's not conceded a goal for nine games, and then he concedes four. It was just, uh, it was one of them freaky days, but it was just, uh, it was just mentally it was draining and physically as well, but we're just uh, thankful it's all over. And now the thoughts of the Carling Premier League, it's going to be a tough season there as well. Yeah, it's going to be tough, but yeah, I think we can do it. I mean, it's people are saying we're going to be like Barnsley, and we're not going to be like Barnsley, you know, because we're, we're Charlton, so, uh, and we're, we're confident we've got a, a big squad and we've got some very good experienced players as well, and Mark Bone and Mark Bright as well. So, uh, we, you know, we've got experience to take into the Premiership, people who've played there, and we've got players who are desperate to do well as well, and younger players. No. That's great, Eddie. Enjoy tonight's celebrations. OK, cheers, Sean. Thanks. What well, a great season for yourself. You've had the reserves. You've been helped coaching here in yeah. the first team. You've won the league. The first thing we got promotion. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah it's just uh, the confidence in the club. It's been very, very, very special. And it came alive with a few months ago. I mean, every game was like a, um, a special game. It was almost carnival in spirit. Uh, as well as there's, there's tension there, but it was magnificent. 15,000 every home game. Uh, winning away games, suddenly no one could score against us. Going into the final, would we win 1 0? We won, went 1 0 up, and everyone thought, that's it, we've done it. And then 2 1, pulled it back, and it kept going. I think at 4 3, even the most die hard supporter must have thought, we can't do it now. And we refused to lose, pulled it off. It was, it was tremendous. That's been the spirit of the club for the whole time, and hope we can carry that forward to the Premier League. I certainly hope so, and there's no reason why we can't. I, we're there not to visit, but to stay. Keith, thank you very much. I know you were number two on the penalty yeah. list, but did you really fancy it when it came down to it? Yeah, because like, I've, I've taken one before, and it's one of the things I, you know, I, I like to do, a bit of pressure, revel in it. But you know, it wasn't to be, and the manager made the right decision. The people who took the penalties, everyone took an excellent penalty, and I always knew, I always knew that I should save one. Kevin Phillips was standing next to me at the bench, and I just said to him, "He'll save one. I know he will. And he's, he's good, like you know, at penalties. And he had a, he had a close one um, when he, he parred it in, you know. But that, that, that it, was a, it was a shame for obviously Michael Gray. He didn't quite strike it well. He went low, but Sasha was down to it, and you can't. I can't even explain to you. Like on one kick, you're in the Premiership, and I felt for Peter Reid and for his team, but you know, for ourselves, for all the hard work, what's going into it, we're such a small club against the odds. You know, it was fantastic. We had 35,000 hit this today. I don't know how many we got here today, but it's been a fantastic game. Must be close to 100 or something like that. And you know, we're, re we're really pleased to see them. You know, and I know they're pleased to see us. And just thank the supporters for all their support over the years and keep coming back. Mark Bright, thank you very much. My pleasure. Must have been a great feeling yesterday, at, you know, scoring those goals, but putting the third one away, a hat trick at Wembley. Well, I was like, just schoolboy dreams, isn't it? You know, I was just glad, like, I played really well and scored the goals, and I'm just delighted we're in the Premiership next season, absolutely out of the moon. It was quite strange, a change of, uh, of team yesterday, a side that hadn't let many goals in, but we hadn't scored lately, to suddenly go in, letting four in, and scoring four. That's not like us, is it? No. no we usually score our goals, but didn't concede, but get it to they had a good team. And it must have been like one of the best ever games at Wembley because I mean the fans like that they went through every single emotion watching that game. But at the end of the day, Charles done it, and I'm absolutely delighted. I say as a draining, it must have been terrible by the time the penalties had gone in. You must have been half of you on your knees. They were saying. To tell the truth, I was just sitting in the middle of pitch after I took my penalty, and I was just watching the lads and I just concentrating, and thinking, go on, like all the lads gone. They do not follow us, and you've got to be really, really proud of them. And to celebrate the club's return to the Premiership, we want you to pick your goal of the season. To win a VIP trip to the Valley, pick your top three goals from the last season in order from our shortlist of six, which is coming up, and send it to the address at the end of the six goals.
So pick your top three goals from those six and write to us at the address on the screen. If your selection agrees with ours, you could be winning a VIP trip to the Valley to watch Charlton in the Premiership. No!